in order to work with GarageBand. Remember that setup that I had earlier where you have your piano roll down here, you have your info track down here, and details down here. Well, first thing you're going to do when you have your uh, new GarageBand set up and, you know, uh, it's the first thing you've ever created, your first song ever, everything looks blank, everything looks new, like, yeah, you're ready to go. First thing you have to do, you hold command, and you click in this blank area in the software track right here, and that creates a new, uh, I guess, loop. You make, you make, technically you're making your own loops here, so yeah, we're going to call it a loop. You make your own loop by holding command and clicking. Click, just click, and you'll, you'll start creating loops, loop regions all over the place. It's awesome. Uh, yours will probably be bigger. I don't know why mine are set to be so small. It's weird. Um, but it'll probably come up like this, and you'll have this blank spot, and now you're ready to go. Uh, next thing you do in order to get a little bit further and start actually making music is to hold command down here in this uh, my uh, loop region. Or no, what is this? This is the piano roll. Inside the piano roll, and you just command click again. Oh, hey, look a note. Now another note, and there's another note. Oh, that's sharp. There we go. And now, when you play it back, I'm actually going to solo this just so you can hear. Magic. You can make your own notes, you can make your own music. It's just like you're a composer, except not as cool, and people will be like, you're using GarageBand and not a pen and a piece of paper. Don't let them tell you otherwise, you're awesome. magic. Dude, this program can do so many things that most people don't believe that it can actually do. You can make all your notes, click and drag. A few of the things to worry about over here, you can adjust pitch. I think, uh, I really don't know. I think maybe this is sense that you're changing it. It's, it's not a lot of change when you're changing the pitch there. Note velocity, that's a big change. Uh, listen to the difference between when I have note velocity on 1 and when I have it on 127. I'm going to change it halfway through. you hear that? You couldn't even hear it when it was on one. So let's put it at like maybe 37. It changes the, uh, not only the volume, but it actually finds a different sample in the world of GarageBand, somewhere hidden in your uh, hard drive, and, uh, and plays that new sample of the software instrument. Um, I guess these are generators anyway, so it's not really a sample. But it's going in and it's changing the attack time and it's probably uh, changing the decay time and uh, a bunch of other settings somewhere in, inside GarageBand in order to make it sound like you're really hitting a key harder on a grand piano or if you're playing an organ or maybe if you like synth and you're a synth player then you're hitting synth notes harder. Yeah, but just know that that's there. Note Velocity you can change them up. You can actually even go into this note editor if you uh, are really into composing. Maybe you're maybe you're like a finale composer and you're trying to play with GarageBand now because it sounds a lot better and finale instruments sound like crap. Uh, know that you can click this little dealie down here, blings up your uh, note creator, same way. Command click, and then you can change your uh, note length change it to a, a quarter note, maybe a half note, maybe a, maybe a, maybe a full note, or whole note, rather, um, or an eighth. They can go down pretty small, too. If you zoom in, I don't know if it'll do it here. It does it in the other one. It brings up a, 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 smaller, a smaller grid, which can allow for smaller notes. So see here how there's only uh, four cuts. I think this is a measure, one, two, three, four. No, that's uh, just one beat. This is one beat. So you have an eighth note here, sixteenth note here. If you want to make it even smaller, if you zoom in, see how the grid spaces out? You can now make it even smaller. It's like a 132nd or 164th or whatever the heck this is. This is like a one millionth. That doesn't even register. What would that be? I don't know. If somebody finds that out, I will give you a prize. Not. Um... So yeah, those are the those are the few basics that that I mess with. Let me show you some of the settings that I changed in order to make this song almost sound like Kesha's. 
producer who made a pretty interesting song. First thing I did is uh, popped open iTunes, you know, listen to the song over and over again, trying to find out what kind of layers are in there and what kind of sound they're getting and why it sounds the way it does. Um, and in the beginning, what they have is they have a few different layers. They have the high retro sound, which, I don't know, a lot of these songs nowadays are going with those uh, old school Super Nintendo and Nintendo sound effects, uh, maybe Game Boy, maybe they sample a Game Boy. Uh, a few of those sounds that are coming through, making it sound new and fresh, even though technically it's like 20 years old, and uh, they're just reusing it. Even the, I, I think it's cool, though. I'm not going to knock it. It's nice. Uh, anyways, uh, they have a sound that sounds like retro, but the problem was it has this really weird vibrato thing, and if you don't know what vibrato is, uh, I'll let a sample that for you. See how it sounds like it's going in and out of pitch, like of high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, going like that? Um, that's vibrato, and uh, that's really hard to emulate in GarageBand, so what I ended up doing is I made a Retro sound digital mono effect. It's really low. I don't know if you can hear that. Doesn't really sound like much, does it? Well, I also turned on this little thing called distortion, which, if any of you are guitar players, you'll know that it uh, changes the sound, uh, grunges it up a bit, makes it sound more intense, uh, more clarity. Uh, I don't know what other adjectives I could use to describe distortion. But, um... See how it sounds sort of like a Game Boy now? That's what distortion does for you. Um, it doesn't make it sound like a Game Boy, it just distorts it. It, it makes it sound different, uh, not normal. Yeah, sounds crunchy. That's a good word to use, crunchy. Compressor's just on there to limit a few of the tracks on here. I don't even know if any of these changed. Yeah, I changed it a little bit. Um, don't worry about adding a compressor. That's a little advanced for this. Uh, another thing that I used was a phaser, and that was the only way that I could figure out how to make it sound like it has a natural vibrato effect. Um, if somebody else finds a better way to do this, by all means, please tell me, because, uh, I don't know, I don't like looking up tutorials for GarageBand. I have too many other tutorials to watch. It's a very long list of tutorials that I enjoy watching. Yeah. Um, and Phaser uh, basically did that for me. It was a vibrato effect. It can change the intensity, which is uh, how much it's going to affect your note, the speed, how fast it's going to, uh, uh, I guess, phase in and out of uh, the correct note. And uh, your feedback gives you different sounds based off of whether or not the notes uh, clashing with the previous harmonic or whatever it is. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> musical history, I play violin, uh, drums, and I almost took piano lessons, but didn't. So yeah, that's where all this information is coming from. Violin, drums, and an almost, almost piano. Almost. <laughs>